team where she was a team captain for many, many years. She had a 10 year national team uh, career. And from there, she moved on to uh, as a coach. Now, uh, a former have had national team coach, but also have had the um, uh, uh, had uh, the Steenhus that are presented here today, the Steenhus Basketball College. Uh, Trina was originally a physical player and has also introduced a lot of us to the importance of physical training and uh, and to improve our technique by getting in better shape and getting better physically. She showed it as a player and she mentored it as a teacher. But today we're going to see some of the some of the work Trina has put in with her group in Steen, who's also been studying with the FECC and uh, other FIBA uh, courses. And it's about uh, team offense. So, um, so uh, I'll get some help uh, moving this away so Trina can show the the, the stuff on the floor, and um, so welcome, Trina Timms. Over last autumn, and um, I saw how Harry Peretta works with the five out offense. We have two different motion offenses. One is four out and a post, there's more of a dribble drive offense. And then this five out, there's more of a cutting offense where we uh, do a lot of bulk uh, basket cuts and a lot of screens away from the ball. So we have some basic ideas that goes for both offenses and uh, then we have the differences from where do the next good action come. Does it come out of a dribble in the dribble drive offense or does it come out of a pass and a cut or a reaction? So today I'm going to talk about the five out because the, the approach that I've picked up at Villanova is a little bit different than from what you usually do. Um, basically because of a lot of cutting off the screens instead of coming to the ball seeking the shot. So the person receiving the screens often end up cutting to the basket. And first of all, just to get the hang of how to get open at the certain spots and the rotation, we do a uh, a drill where we cut towards the ball to end up at the position where we want to receive the ball instead of just cutting to the spot. And we're going to bring in a group. Balls over here, one defensive player and a player with the ball. The ball's over here with the cutter here. We need the ball over here, I think. Defensive player. So we're going to have this player from the wing wanting to receive the ball on the top. Just cutting towards the ball, hitting the defense coming out. And wait, 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 wait. One of the things is to be able to cut out of this pass. The important thing would be to receive with a slash move and actually attacking the defense already with the first step off the pass and then cut to the basket. So we're going to go again. Run to the defense. Create contact, come out, slash move and step and cut. Okay. Like, offense become defense, a new player comes in. We can have another ball here. But the idea of creating contact, making space, and afterwards with the slash move, actually create your own cut right away. Come, let's go. Create contact, slash move, and right into the, the cut. Here I got you. Okay, we need to hold up here. Offense, offense become defense so we get the right rotation. But I need you to make the slash move, move your foot, make the pass. So we get the slash move to be the start of our cut. It's going to be very important to make it work that you can actually create that initial first space out of the slash move. Make a slash move. Slash. Okay. We're going to use this 
uh, in a three and zero situation, just to have an idea, now there's no defense, but the same thing, whenever we replace, we run towards the ball, and then when we reverse it, we do it with a slash move and make the cut out of the pass. So just three players, no defense, three offensive players. Come, we, start, we start with the ball on the top. Same thing, just without a defense, just to make the rotation. So you'll fill the spot, come up, make the slash move, step into your pass. We need to make a slash move to step into the pass. Okay, it looks it looks very uh, easy and common, but what happens when we get to play a lot of times, we end up running to the spot instead of running to the defense first, and we won't be able to create space. Okay? So this is like the basic principles. Whenever we play, if you need or if you reach to bring the defense out further out than the three-point line, that would automatically be a backdoor cut. So if for some reason you go so far out, the defense will follow you, that would mean for the offense to cut back door right away. So we keep going a little bit, but now if for some reason the passer feels there's no pass to make because the defense is playing, there's no defense now, but we have the idea of it, we run back door, okay, and come back right down, right now. Okay, let's go. If we can't make the pass to the top because it's overplayed, we can run a back door. Okay? Okay, just hold it. We put in the next two players because the last two players would be corners. Same thing, so now you can even pass down and you can run back doors. If you don't feel like passing, also here, run straight to the ball, come out. If you don't feel like passing, because you overplayed, you run a back door. You can make a ball fake if you need to, to show that you're not open. We need some back doors. Okay, this is the basic principles, but then again, if we don't feel like passing for some reason, I don't feel secure making the next pass, I can always dribble out the next player. So I can make a, a ball fake if I don't feel like passing because he's overplayed, but also I can dribble him out, and if somebody dribbles towards me, it means I have to make a basket cut right away, and we fill in from there. Always pivot and into the cut. Okay, great. This is like the basic set of just passing and cutting, but now the difference from Brita, ordinarily five out maybe, comes in. We're going to have a screen instead of cutting, we pass to the side, but instead of cutting, we go and set a screen. So we just, um, three players out here, a black defensive player, and the wings, you're out for a second. The player playing defense on the wing. We make the pass. I don't feel like cutting any longer. I want to go and set a screen for my teammate. We set up the screen, and every time right now, he has to curl or he has to run a back door. He cannot come back up and fill the, the empty spot up here. It's going to be the screener replacing himself. So let's go back. The idea is I make the pass, set up my screen, curl if he's following me, and then the player screening coming back on the top. Okay? If, if the defense doesn't follow him, but like anticipate the curl, instead of curling, he's running a back door. But the person receiving the screen has to be the one going to the basket right now. Let's go. Okay, what we want to do is to make the screen with the back more or less to the ball and make sure the player receiving the screen actually ends up looking under the screen to make eye contact. If the defense doesn't follow, I just keep going, okay? 
Okay, to make this more uh, like a drill, we need another player here with an extra ball. Now we're going to rotate all the time, okay? So, the player setting the screen's coming back to get the shot at the same time. Make sure to put the foot inside out for the shot. Let's go. Set up the screen, curl, come back, replace, replace. But replace on the guard spot, go further out, there's no room. We need to rotate so we don't stay in the same positions. Let's go. Like we usually do. Okay, we rotate from being the screener, going defense, right? So, screener, go defense. Defense, go offense. Let's go. Defense, go offense over here. Let's go. Set up the screen, don't start too close, come back for the shot. Okay, let's rotate, let's go. Let's go. Okay. We're going to add another defensive player, just another player. And now we want you to switch, okay? So when the screen is set, we're going to switch. And that means the screener, every time I realize that somebody is actually taking over the man I'm screening for, the switch is there, I need to slip. That's the only time I want the player receiving the screen to come back up here. Whenever they switch, we slip. Let's go. Okay, we, we need to create a little bit of contact, but the moment he passes your shoulder, you slip. Okay, hold it and slip in front. Once more. Okay, come back. Same group, same group. Yeah. The moment I set the screen, as soon as he passed my shoulder, I need to make sure I step in and I ask for the ball. I can't just be kind of a roll. It really needs to be aggressive and a step towards the basket. Try once more. Okay, and be patient. Don't move before the screen is set. Be patient so we actually can create a little bit of contact. Last couple of times. Create a little bit of contact. We move too fast. Make sure you set up the screen. We have no contact. Okay. Okay, let's go uh, three whites and uh, three blacks. So we go three and three just to see how it works when we play three and three, just for a second. Yeah. You can cut at any time. Remember to set up your man, come back. And use the left hand. <laughs> Once more, let's go. Make sure you set up the screen so you can create contact. Let's go, start again. Set up the screen, set up the screen. Let's go. Slip, slip. Okay, sometimes 
we need to, to uh, mix it up and what we usually do is to decide one player that can actually go instead of setting a way screen can go and make a ball screen also. Just for the sake of the drill, we can do it every time now for a second, then we mix it up playing three on three. But instead of uh, passing to the side and uh, go screen away, the five and four players could easily go and set a ball screen instead. But the same thing there, as soon as the screen is set, the player screening needs to cut to the basket. He cannot stay and wait. Okay? So now we just do the drill. So we have uh, players just the passing and going screen. We don't need you to over here. Come up here instead. So we just pass to the side. The deer is like usually ball screens. We set the screen, but this player needs to make a jab step at the least to set up his screen. He needs to make the defender play him away from the screen first and then to use at least two dribbles going the other way to stretch the screen and create space. He can roll and he can also slip the screen if he wants to, but he needs to end up going towards the basket. Let's start here. Yeah. Slash. <laughs> Two dribbles, two dribbles. So each time the receiver of the screen has to square up and make sure at least to make a jab step, maybe a dribble, and then two dribbles off the screen just to spread it out. Let's go. Okay, so the idea now, we have the cut, we have the pass and screen away, and the possibility of making a ball screen. It's not, you can do it differently than this, but that's the principle that the screener now, whenever we make a ball screen, has to end up be going to the basket. That's the most important thing. Um, from there, you can also have a situation where we pass and where we end up posting up. So we're going to do that as well. We're going to have... Uh, it could be anybody, so right now we just start with a defensive player on the guard spot and two wings without a ball. Oh, without a defense, just two wings. Two wings. Like, without a defense, without a defense. Just step out. Offense. So, the point right now, pass to the side, make a cut, trying to post up. And he tries to beat his man, wait, wait, wait. He tries to beat his man to the block, so his lowest foot's gonna be in the block. The lowest foot's gonna be in the block, and he wanna try and make contact and sit on the lower leg on the defensive player. The rule right now is gonna be on the pass. I post up as hard as I can. For some reason, if I don't get the ball here, I have a second chance when the ball goes back up there. That's to pin my man. I have to make a drop step and pin my man. If I doesn't get the ball there, I have to go out. I can't stay in here. So I have the possibility to post up for just a second while the ball is still here. When the ball is reversed, I need to pin my man with my baseline foot, make a drop step, pin for the ball, and if I don't get it, you go out. Okay, stay, 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 Asmus, just stay. And you defensive player. Or you can stand D. Okay, we add this up, going three and three. Just let's go. Three offensive players, three defensive players. So we have the possibility of passing and cutting, passing, screening away. When we do that, we either curl, backdoor cut, or if they switch, we slip. We decide on this team that uh, Jakob is the one that could actually could set a screen, a ball screen. If he feels like it, he doesn't have to, but he could set a ball screen. And anybody, at any time, if I feel like cutting and posting my man up, I'm allowed to do that. Okay? <laughs> the importance is, whenever you set the screen, replace yourself real quick. Post up, post up, post up. 
Okay, let's go again. If you want to post up and pin, make sure you really ask for the ball wide. Oh, help defense. Could be there. Let's go. Once more. Okay. The last thing to add is uh, a flare screen right now. And then we're going to look at how it looks in five on five. So whenever uh, we have a shooter that we want to create a shot for, we could make a flare screen. Um, I think I need to change a little bit here. So we want to create a shot for Victor. And that means as soon as uh, the ball goes to the side, and we know that on forehand, we want to create a shot. We're going to have the, uh, the wing player come and set a flare screen. And we dribble towards the screen at the same time. Wait a second, go back, go back a little bit. As soon as uh, the player receiving the screen is passing his, de uh, his uh, teammate, he slips the screen. So we have, still have the cut to the basket. Yeah, you need to hit him as soon as he passes you. We split, okay? And slip to the basket. Okay, try it once more. Okay, this is probably going to be the hardest thing, at least it's the hardest thing for us right now, to actually get shots out of our, our flash screens. So we're going to do shooting drill to try and do that, and then we're going to go within five and five afterwards. So we have um, the balls here. We're going to have screeners here. We're going to rotate. We, we don't have defensive players on YouTube. We just have a defensive player on the ball. Just a defensive player on the ball. Okay? Weinzel, please. Come here. Come over here. I need some more shooters. Just a few more shooters. We just rotate in. So it's a shooting drill. Passing to the side. Go and set the screen. Make sure you set, set the screen up. Just making a step towards the ball. Then the screen is there. We slip. And what we're going to try and do is actually catch the ball with the left foot on the ground so you can just step in the shot and shoot. Okay? If we have a test, step in, so we come in, so the bar flare. Yep. Yeah. Just rotate, let's go. Just rotate. The difficult part of it is to actually catch with your left foot and step in and shoot fast enough for the defense not to get back on you. Hmm? Okay. After the screen is set, after the screen is set, we need to slip to the basket. So we always end up having a cut to the basket. So you pass, set the screen, slip, slip, slip. And don't wait. It's got to be a hard cut as soon as the screen is set, Rasmus. As soon as the screen is set, cut hard. It's going to create the room. <laughs> slip, slip. Okay. We're going to try and walk through it five and five just to have an idea of what we could expect. Or we start five and zero. Let's go white, five and zero. White, let's go. So now we have the pass and cut. We have the pass and cut and post up. We have the pass and screen away resulting in a curl or back door. We have a pass and a ball screen. It's going to be uh, Rasmus following his pass whenever he wants to by a ball screen. And we're going to create flare shots for Victor. He's our shooter. It's a lot of things. You don't have to do it, but you can. So if I'm passing the ball to Victor, I know that whenever he lets go of the ball, I should be there setting the screen because he should be reversing the ball. Okay? Um, 
Right now, as a dribble drive offense, you can say that it's a person with the ball having control. Right now, it's the person who have just made the last pass that has the control, creating the next good opportunity for the team. Okay, let's try. Okay, let's go again. Let's go again. Once more. The point of it is it doesn't really matter who is on which position. Come back, come back, come back. You see that screen? He cut back. I can talk while you're playing. It's okay. You don't need to stop. Whenever you set a screen, come back, come back. Replace yourself real fast. Come back. You can never make a wrong decision as long as we end up having a cut to the basket. It will happen like it just did here, that the ball moves faster than the players does. And it's, it's okay because the player that was supposed to be receiving the first screen, when you come around, let's say again, Victor, actually the ball was starting here. So he passed and started to screen down. But the ball was already gone to the next player. Right here we have a reaction. Out of passing, I need to either cut a screen Okay, Victor, you have to decide. Either you cut or you screen. So he would just fill that spot instead. So even though he was supposed to wait, it doesn't really matter, the ball goes ahead of the play. Either he would receive, either Jakob would receive a double screen, or a stacker screen, or he would just replace the cut. So it doesn't really matter. Let's try again. Okay, just hold for a second. It takes it takes a lot of of um, yeah feeling for who on the team is good at doing what. So, like right now when we play, we are not really at the moment or at the spot where we can use the flare screen that well yet because it's difficult. Both the player with the ball have to realize it and dribble towards the flare screen, and the player setting up and they have to do it with timing, and that's pretty difficult actually. But uh, eventually I hope it's going to work. I've seen it work uh, extremely well. It's just a matter of getting all the little pieces, I think, to, to get together at the right timing. Um, we have some entrances for this to make it go within a game where it could be hard to get the first pass to the side or um, even in a fast break situation. So if we start from uh, from up here, we'll look a little bit at how we do it. It doesn't really need to be that way because you can start wherever you want to go. At Villanova, they really like just to dribble up at whatever spot was closest and then go started from there. But in our transition game, we like to have two wings. The, whoever is first down the floor would run the wings. The third person would have to run the middle of the floor because we want a trailer in our fast break. So. We have the two first players up, right? That's Jakob and Bjarno, that's fine. The third player would run the paint. Whenever the ball goes to a wing, he goes to that side and he posts, no, 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 stay there, stay there. He posts up. Victor, he makes a basket cut and then he comes out at the corner. As before, when the person was cutting and deciding to post up, he can stay there until the next pass. He cannot stay longer than that. Then we go five out from there. So he can stay, and if the pass go to Victor, I, I need him to clear out, because then we're gonna have a move here. Either we have a cut, so he has to be out of the way, or we have the screen and the curl and the replace. So he needs to be all, all out of the way as soon as the second pass go. Let's, let's try it again. So you cut and post up. As soon as the ball goes, he's out of the way. Okay, once more, just for the feel of it. Okay. 
Okay, we need to start over. We need to start over. The first, we have two wings. First cutter go to the block. Or the, th the first trailer goes to the block. I don't care who it is. Two first pl players going up. Go to the ball. Okay, hold it. Now, now you maybe see why we started out doing the drill we started with cutting to the ball and then out. Because now we get going in the motions and it's getting a little bit more sloppy. So we start running directly to the spot. And when we're going to play, that's not going to work. So with the defense, we really need to cut towards the ball, hit the defense and come out. And be really sharp, have a change of direction every time we fill a spot. So try once more. Let's go. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Every time I make a pass, we need to have a cut. Every time. Every time. Every time after a pass, we need to end up with a cut. Okay, let's try with defense on. Sometimes a little bit, it's a little bit easier with the defense on. Come, Thomas. Match up. Yeah, we can start from here. That's fine. With the transition. Match up. Match up. Let's go. Okay, we need to have some uh, sharp cuts. Right now we're just running in circles. So make sure you have hard cuts to the basket. Cut, 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 cut. Okay. The basic idea is whenever you need to fight through a defense to get to your cut, don't do that. Just cut back door. You don't want to fight. If somebody's going to try and prevent you to cut to the basket, just slip and go away. We need to get out of the way to keep the movement. It has to be pretty quick all the time. Okay? Um, sometimes when we're not in a fast break situation, we dribble up towards a uh, two and two set with the guards just dribbling the ball up. We have some entrances for that. It's going to make it easier to get the ball going. And the first one would be just to screen down, the two players screening down at the same time as we do with the curls. We just curl every time we receive a screen and replace ourselves. Okay? So let's try and do that. Let's try and do that. Just screen down, curl, curl the screens and replace. Okay. Okay. If we walk through this, it's not going to work. The player receiving the screen have to really curl with intensity, try to get to the basket, so the defense needs to play defense. And then we go from there. Whoever is going to replace is going to replace with a little bit of intensity too. Let's go. Okay, once more. Once more. Okay, normally we're probably not going to get a lot of shots within the paint. I don't think so, but it's going to create a lot of open spots out here because the defense needs to close down the cutting. Um, also, if we want to put in some drives out of this, it's going to be whenever I replace myself because then the defense is going to come running towards me and then that's when I can drive the opposite direction. Just to show what I'm talking about. If Victor, he passes the ball and screens away. We have a curl and he's coming back towards the ball. The defense is going to be coming, following him. This is where he can drive. Going back the, where he came from because the defense is coming towards him. So that's the drives we would be looking for as well. Okay? So now you can look for your drives as well whenever you're replacing yourself. Okay? Okay? 
Bjarne. Let's go. Bjarne, kom nu. Du skal køre. Let's go. Okay, Philip, he decided to take the drive. What I would like would be not driving on the way where he's going, but to drive back where he came from. So you need to be able to stop up, make sure you're in control so you don't just have to continue. And you can actually, when the defense runs towards you, you attack the way where he's coming from. Once more. Okay, you guys, you can only drive right now. You can only drive when you're re replacing yourself. Okay? Try to be a little bit more disciplined. Make sure you actually replace yourself quick. And that's when you can drive. And replace, 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 and drive. Yep. Okay, that was a lot better because we actually get the defense moving towards you first and then the drive is a lot easier. Okay, um, out of this set also we have a little just a set play because this is pretty much free. We have absolutely uh, no control further than we decide who is the, the ball screener, who is the flare screener receiving the flare screen. Besides that, it's up to the players to find out what is the next best option to get. To get. But we have a set that you can run out of this five out also, I'm going to show you real quick, um, that we call Villanova. It's just a pass to the side and then we start with a flare screen and then a down screen for the corner. Cut, piano, cut. Then we have a down screen. And to start out, what we usually do is to come up here on the top, but after a while the curls on that down screen is going to be pretty effective too. So the idea of spreading it out, the first thing that happens, start out, start out again, the first thing, the defense can just step out for a second. Defense step out. Defense step out. Yeah. So as soon as the pass go, we have a flare cut from the other side and a down screen coming up on the top, replacing the wing. And as soon as the pass go again, a hard cut. And after a while, it can end up being a curl. Once more. Once more. Okay. Fine. Here, the same thing. When you replace yourself on the top, that's where you can drive going back where you came from. You can come up for a lot of easy shots up here, replacing yourself, and you can also decide after you come up, look for your shot to drive back where you came from. Once more without defense, then we're going to try and add on the defense. A curl, curl, curl. No. Okay, come, let's try it with defense just to have an idea. We need defense over here, let's go. Okay, same thing as before, it's going to be maybe one time out of tw a 10 that we get a chance within the, the paint, but a lot of times the shot up here is going to be wide open, and otherwise when I receive the ball, I look for my shot, I can penetrate back. Okay? Um, any questions so far? <laughs> no? Somebody said that I should answer. If I got some questions. No. 
Yeah. On the post, yeah. Yeah. Why the guard cuts on the post side? Is it any idea or is it just... Uh, Actually, uh, because I really like the point guard to get involved real quick again. So I like him to come out and get hold of the ball again when he passed the ball up the court. So it should be like a basket cut first and then normally one out of ten times, not even, I would pass the ball directly to the post. If, if I get the post on a break, it would be before the guard gets down there. Otherwise, if the defense is set, that wouldn't be the chance I would be looking for. I would be looking for the, getting the ball into the post later on, not in the first pass. The defense hasn't moved yet. So that's just... My idea, yeah. yeah. So, if he wants the ball, I would really like the first trailer to get the ball on the move, going towards the basket, and even from a post up, but not like after the first second or two. If he doesn't get the ball right away, don't pass it in there. Let's make the defensive work, and then we can pass it in later on. And then, actually, on our team, our four players are really good at receiving the, the, the screen for the curl. So, if we have... Our post clearing out, we have the guard in the wing, or in the corner with the ball, because I passed it down there, now he's in the corner. And then I go and screen for my four player. That's a pretty strong curl for us. You follow what I'm saying? We have the, the wing here, post up. Post up, uh, yeah, no, post up. Jakob, he's probably be, he'll be our four player. He's over here. You took the rebound, you're coming up late. So we pass the ball up the wing, he's posting up strong, Victor is cutting hard to the basket, he's posting up, if he got it on the break, fine, otherwise we don't really look to pass it into the post player, he's coming out, clearing out, as the ball goes to the corner he'll clear out real fast, and we screen for the four player, that can curl, that's a pretty good shot for us to get. And if he doesn't get it, he's not open, fine, we just go on from there. But basically, I really don't want the paint to be crowded. We, you can tell, like we're a short team. And we don't want the players to get stuck in the paint. Somebody say, okay, you stay in the paint. Create space. And this, different from the, the dribble drive, instead of being the player with the ball deciding what to do, it's a lot more active without the ball. I pass the ball and then whoever made the last pass decides what's the next best move for us. So I have to go somewhere with a, an idea of what to create. What would I create now for my teammates? And if I don't know what to do, our rule is I just cut to the basket. I can't stand. So if I don't know where to go, I go to the basket. Does it make sense? Okay. No, it's more a matter of actually the ball moving faster than the play. So whenever, if, if Victor passed to the side and he screens, for some reason if Rasmus, he doesn't want to hold the ball. He ended up passing it too quick. Or it's more maybe... This, both of the, the wings. Oh, the, the initial, okay. It's whenever we can't just dribble up. Now we had an inbounds play and we can't just dribble up passing it to the wing because the team we play against put a lot of pressure on. Then we just have decided to screen down, curl, replace. So it's not really a, a call, it's just an entry. So whenever I can't get the ball directly to the wing, he could choose differently. He can ask him, oh, say, okay, screen down, curl, replace. Or he could just dribble out the wing if he wants to do that. We just need to get the ball to the wing. It's just a way to get open. But it's always going to work. If, if the corners really curl f fast and to get the ball, the wing is always going to be open, replacing himself. But actually, the, the basic idea, it doesn't really matter who is on which spot. It's a matter of getting the ball from one spot to another. And always, for some reason, if I cannot receive the ball, if we can't pass the ball to the side, just cut back door. Never stay and wait to get the ball, just cut back door. Or if for some reason I don't feel, feel comfortable, that could be the same. I just don't feel comfortable passing the ball. Maybe he's open, I just don't feel comfortable doing it because the last two times somebody stole it. 
I just dribble him out and then we go from there. So it's a matter of making the ball go from one spot to another without too many dribbles. We can dribble from one spot to another. We can dribble whenever our four or five decide to make a ball screen. But besides from that, we really want to pass and cut instead. Pass and screen away. And the key, I think the key is to cut hard. Whenever you stop cutting hard, whenever you start running in circles, it won't work. You need to be able to, to change directions and cut really hard, both to get open, like cutting towards the ball and get back out, but also within the play. Whenever I receive a screen, when I make a cut, I need to cut hard. I need to have a change of direction, change of speed, and cut hard. Yeah? Yeah? No back screens right now. It, that would be from uh, wing to corner pass, and then the curls from up there would be going towards the basket. Not, no, no, no. Because that would need somebody to be in the paint to create that. And we don't want any, right now, we don't want anybody to be in the paint. Just for a very short period of time, at least. But everybody, whoever would want to go and post up, I feel, okay, I have the advantage of posting up. My man could go whenever. I make a pass, I post up. And as long as the, pa or the ball is in the hands of the player I pass to, I can stay there and post up. And maybe one day it's going to be going out of that situation. We could create something else, but so far, no. Yeah. 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 We're not there yet. It's basically idea, I don't know if you can uh, follow me, but basically the, uh, the routine of most Danish players would be whenever I receive a screen, I go towards the ball. Whenever somebody screens for me, if the pass goes to the side and I receive a screen, what I would do most of the time would just automatically be I go to the ball. And that's the only change, basically. That, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for that player that receives the ball to cut to the basket in some way, either by a curl or by a backdoor. Only if we have a switch, then it's the player setting the screen going to the basket. But I think that's basically the, the difference. And then from that also setting the flare screen, that whenever you set the flare screen, you have to, to slip the screen. The player setting the screen have to slip and make sure you cut. So you always have this movement towards the basket that somebody's going to guard, and that would leave open shots behind. Villanova, where I saw this, um, they shoot a lot of three-pointers. They get so many open shots. It's incredible. But it, for it to succeed, you need to be able to backpedal, set your feet, and shoot. Right now, since we just started doing this, we really still look a lot for the, the shots within the paint. A little bit too much, I think, as well. But we'll get there eventually. It takes time. But basically for, for us, like we're in that mid group that uh, we talked about earlier. Like what we try to work with to get each player to be more aware of what is the next best situation in different sets. So it's more uh, educational set. We have set plays as well to run, but this is more for the players to actually grow for themselves and find out what would be the next best solution for me within within the rules of the offense. And um, for me, that's a nice way to, to work with young players, but also it's nice to have two different sets because sometimes you get very much rolled up in the same thing. It's hard to change face when you do a motion offense. You go in the same pace for some reason. So it's nice to have two different looks. Yeah? Uh, you mentioned twice after the player screen, the player setting the, the feet when they square to the yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably because they are right hand. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But is that the way you're teaching all the way? It's always do that. For the flare screens right now? Yeah. yeah. Simply to, to catch and shoot faster. They, if they can jump and shoot, it's fine. But I don't want to go right and step with your left and then shoot right handed. Yeah. Otherwise, other, if you can jump and shoot, it's fine. We're not there right now. You get more you get more power within your shot if you're with your left foot and you step into your shots because you're moving away.
But if you can jump and shoot, I would love, I would love that. Yeah. What? Yeah, because if you catch on your right foot and you shoot right-handed and you are going away from your shot, Mm. If you can jump and qua catch, it's fine. If you can, if you can do that and be within your power of your, your legs, it's fine. But otherwise, I would go left, right. Yeah. Mm. That's uh, that's true, but I think you need to to manage to do one thing, and then you add up the next, and then you decide for yourself which one works best for me. So that's how I like to teach it, anyways. That you present one way to do it, and when once you can actually do that, you present the next way, and then they choose for themselves. You can't just throw on everything and then uh, make the players decide. You work on a technique for a while, and then you work on another one, and then. You make them decide which one fits for me. But I definitely would start going left-right. 